Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Kellen here with Droid Life. We're taking a look today at the always on display feature for the Samsung Galaxy S7, which I have here. And this is also on the S7 Edge. Now, this is one of those things that we featured in our first 10 things you should do video. So we thought we'd dive in maybe a little bit more and give you a bit of um, explanation into what you can do, how it compares to the versions from Motorola and Google and things like that. So for those not familiar, this is always on display. When you turn your phone off or just i shouldn't say off when you put it into a sleep state by just locking it and the screen turns off you can get specific pixels to essentially light up and show you information so i have it set to show me date battery percentage time and then there are some notification icons for things that i've missed and that's essentially what it is so the idea here is that you have to pick up your phone less or press fewer buttons uh, throughout the day just to do something as simple as check the time so if this is just sitting on your desk or on a table or on your couch or wherever the time is always there and you can just glance over just like you would a normal clock and see things like that but then you can also check the date battery percentage and again notification so it's one of those things that we really really appreciate manufa that manufacturers are starting to do um, and again we'll we'll show you in a second whether or not it compares to what motorola and google are doing but before we get there let's just dive into some settings so you guys can see exactly what we're working with here so it, it is buried in display settings and there is a section for always on display so if we just tap on that you'll get in here and again out of the box mine was turned off so if you want to use this be sure to jump in here and toggle that to on uh, so what we've got here are three basic options. You can use a clock style always on display, a calendar, or an image. Um, I've chosen clock, so if we go through, you can also choose clock style. So you see there's a number here. I just have the basic setup, but you can change the way the clock looks. So if I choose that one and back out and we lock it, you should see a different clock. So there you have a bigger hour, minute hand, um, and just a different arrangement there. So there are actually quite a few different options to choose from. Uh, you can see you can have a multi, um, I should say, multi-location time here. You could go with more of an analog style if that suits you a little bit better. See that light up there. So you can kind of play with these a little bit and sort of match it up to however you really want it to look. I've sort of stuck with the basic. Um, so that's that's the clock options. One of the other things they're letting you do is add some background images. Now these are all preset and so you can't upload your own. But if you choose one, like let's just say we choose this one, it's sort of tough to see there. But if I turn the screen off, and I'll actually pick this up. There is a subtle sort of green texture image behind the clock now. So that's their version of what an image background would look like. And so there's a few in here that you can play with. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, if you are um, using like a different theme from Samsung's theme store, there are some always on options in there that will tweak that image and some other things. And so we'll see probably this whole always on situation grow over time as those themes start to enable um, some customization there. So if we don't go with clock, we could go calendar. And so if we go calendar, there are a couple of, of styles, one with a big clock on top, followed by a calendar at the bottom, one with a big sort of, um, month and year followed by a calendar down at the bottom so you can see those there so if i just choose that and we lock you'll get a look at what this looks like so there you have time and then a giant calendar that really just highlights the specific day it's actually not that useful it doesn't list out calendar information or anything like that as far as i know so uh and then the third option is image so if we go to image and you jump in here there's actually a handful of things and these are different than the ones that you can put behind the clock so i'll just choose this first one and we'll lock it so you guys can get a look at what this so it's, it's essentially a solar system sort of thing some space stuff and that is what you would see always on your display so you're not getting a clock or date or battery percentage you're just getting that so it's up to you if you, if you want to take a look at that option um, i'm going to go back to clock and just leave it how i've left it so that's always on display in a nutshell basically when you have your screen your your phone locked you can have it display time and and some of those information so it, it's a cool thing and we don't know fully how well or i guess i should say how this is going to impact battery in samsung during our initial impressions of the phone didn't have specific information they said they hadn't fully tested it so they're not even sure if this is going to use up 10 percent of your battery in a day or one percent we're not fully sure yet either way I'm a big fan of it. So now that we've taken a look at that, let's sort of look at how it compares to what 
Motorola and Google are doing. So here is the Nexus 6P, and this is the Moto X Pure Edition. So they both sort of feature their own versions of this, uh, and I would argue they are a thousand times better <laughs> than Samsung. So Samsung, what it has going for it is the fact that it's always on and hopefully just sipping battery and the fact that you don't have to do anything in order to see it. Uh, that's sort of where it uh, it ends in terms of bonuses for the Samsung version. With Motorola's, you can wave over the top and get it to come on. So it's not always on, but you can have it come on just by waving over the top and you'll see clock and some missed notifications. With Google's, there isn't really any way to activate it unless something new comes in or if you pick it up to sort of look at it, you can get it to come on that way. So those are sort of the differences. Always on, a wave turns it on, and you actually have to pick up or receive a notification in order for Google's to come on. Um, it, in terms of then interactivity, Samsung's doesn't actually have any interactivity. So you can see I have missed notifications. I can't actually touch any of these and do anything. I can't swipe on this or double tap to get it to wake. Nothing actually happens there. In order to get into these notifications, I actually have to either press the physical home button or the side power switch, and then it sort of brings me to the lock screen and then I can interact with my notifications. But in terms of the always on display, there is no interactivity. Um, if we go over to the Moto side, obviously you can touch um, some of these icons and they will then show you more information. You can swipe up into those to open them on the phone. Um, and so that's sort of how that works. So you actually do have some interactivity there. On Google's side, we'll need to tip that up. Um, once you touch the screen, it then lights up and you can start interacting with items then. So while you do have to pick it up or you have to wait for something to come in, it does light up and then you can interact with it right away without actually having to hit a button. So it's sort of a better implementation. Um, the other thing then, which is really, really a bummer is, well, and for Samsung anyway, is this only works in terms of the notifications you see with Samsung's stock apps. So we're talking the dialer, the text messaging app, probably their email app, though I would probably never use that, so I can't tell you, and potentially even their calendar app. So what I mean by that is you'll see I have a missed call and a missed text here. That's all it will show me because I've actually set up for a minute now just for this test to use their text app. But you can see if I open this, I actually have lots of notifications. I have a Hangouts message and emails and my Nest went off and there's more notifications. But all this is showing me are those two right there, which isn't much. Now, on the other hand, over here with Motorola, I have emails from Inbox and messages from Hangouts. And so that's all there and I've obviously cleared some of my other notifications, but it would show me my Nest notifications and things like that. Same thing over here with Google. So if we flip this back up, you'll see I have messages from me and Hangouts and emails and it showed my Nest motion activity uh, or my Dropcam motion activity. So these are showing you everything. This is only showing you Samsung's apps, which is actually quite unfortunate. So the other test I would show you then is if I get a message, so you can see these two are off right now and this is always on. So this is a Hangouts message. And that comes in, you see that light up and that light up. And this vibrates, but it doesn't show me what it's vibrating for because it only uses those stock apps and there's no Hangouts integration. I have no idea what came through there. And so then I actually have to touch the button to wake it up to see that it was a new Hangouts message. That's unfortunate. So with these two, it lights up, pops up. If you have some sort of notification on, you know to look over. And then they show you on the lock screen what just happened. With Samsung's implementation in its current state by only supporting those stock apps, I have no idea. And I then have to interact with my phone. So uh, that's that's just sort of a, a quick comparison. But the, the general thought here is always on display is useful for checking the time, the date, your battery percentage, if you have missed calls, and if you happen to use their stock text app. Otherwise, there's not that many uses for it. You don't get interaction with any of your other apps and it's sort of limited in how that works. So it's nice that it's always on. You can check the time. It's not so nice that they haven't allowed third-party applications to start working with that. They could over time. If you guys remember multitasking or multi-window on the first couple of Samsung phones that had that and even edge display we didn't get any of that interactivity either, and they've sort of upgraded those over time to add more, uh, a more robust catalog of apps that support it. So anyways, this has just been a quick look here at Always On Display. Now you guys know how it works and how it compares to the rest of the competition. If you guys have comments, questions, let us know. We're Joy Life. Peace.